Hi guys, it's us. How are you, Harry? Doing well. Good. Um, this is the second part of this week's podcast. We've already done one, um, and it won't be it won't be on this platform. It will be over on um, Bitchit. Bit of a rant, a um, few hard hitting facts in there, um, but. I had to get this off my chest. I, I, I really did. With, with what I've been coming across over the last um, the last few days, I, I I just had to get this off my chest. So um, I'll put the link below. Um, jump over and, and and watch that. So we've got a lot of stuff to get through this week, guys, and I mean a lot of stuff. And we're going to be bouncing all over the place. We haven't done a presentation. We haven't got a PowerPoint for you this week because. We, as I say, we're we're literally all over the place, aren't we, Harry? Yeah, we we have something uh, put together for next week, but uh, for this week, um, we just figured we're going to cover uh, a wide gamut of stuff that's still related uh, and uh, just present it in a in a conversation. Yeah, yeah. So I've been getting a few um, comments on stolen history and um, Zach's free to find truth website about the Yehudin, who are the Yehudin? Well, um, we didn't have a name for them until we listened to uh, John Lam Lash. If you haven't listened to his channel, he's not the most interesting narrator, let's put it that way, but his information is gold. Am I right, Harry? Very boring style. Um, he doesn't ever give any kind of visuals. He's just his, his talk. Uh, and his talk is very monotone, but... Man, he really runs the gamut of topics and he really threads the needle between them all. And the one that really grabbed our attention is about the, um, the Eloah, the Elohim and the Yehudans. Uh, and then of course, he, he can tie a lot of that stuff in with that September date. He can tie a lot of that into, um, uh, you know, the jab, if you want, you know, the jab. And uh, it, it, he's amazing. He, he does a really good job in, uh, in tying a lot of that stuff together. And he's been doing it for a very, very long time. I, I think the guy's like 76 years old and he's been doing it all his life. He started when he was a teenager. So this guy knows his stuff. Um, so essentially, if, if, you're, if you're not aware of it, I mean, the, we did do a whole podcast um, over on BitChute called The Yahoo. Um, and they are the Genesis 127 creation. They are the rulers, what people affectionately call the elite today. Um, them. It's the them that everyone always asks. Who are they? Who are them? Yeah. Um, and we weren't aware of this until, until recently because we always think that uh, Adam was the Genesis 2 creation. Genesis 2 7, but in Genesis 126, in the original Hebrew text, it says, Let us make Adam. And Adam or Adam means another race of people. In other words, not like us. Um, so if you haven't watched that, um, then you know, please, please do. And um, we explain exactly who they are um, and what they're doing, and we can see it going on going on today. So then we get then then John gets into um, the words that most people are familiar with, so Sophia or Sophia. Isn't it interesting that the word Sophia or Sophia, 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 F E A R, which yeah, so really fire, is, yeah. is, is the four elements: fire, earth, air, and river. You can substitute water for river, right? And then of course mm -hmm. the um, is the ether. Um, uh, which is also Gaia. Sophia is also Gaia, which is essentially Mother Earth. And we were talking about how both these words end in I-A, which is A-I, backwards. Mm -hmm. And we, we hypothesize that that could stand for authentic intelligence, the yeah. A-I. Mm -hmm. um, but the stove, the P-H, which is in phos the word phosphorus, which is a Greek word. The phos is light, right, Harry? Mm -hmm. That's right. So if we break that word down into the three syllables, phos, 
for us. Light for, for us. us. Yeah, mm -hmm. remember, we did that podcast about the language confusion with the children mm -hmm. and how it relates to that passage in the Bible where it says, let's go and confuse their languages. So if we take the, um, the, the, the phonetics, phos, light, for us, the same with um, the AI in Sophia, light, uh, authentic intelligence, light. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you read Sophia backwards and you, and you take out the PH and add, and add the Greek phi letter, because in Greek, the, the letter, uh, the PH sound is made by one letter and that's the phi, right? So if you, if you read it back, it says AI phos, or in other words, the light of AI. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, P H O S, or yeah, you, you, you switch the H P to, to, to the P H O S, A I FOS, light. Yeah. And then we, we, we were talking about, you know, how Tesla, Tesla said the, um, the key to the universe is energy, frequency, and vibration, right? Well, we were looking at um, energy or electricity. Um, you know, I, I have um, what are known as an e bike. Okay, that's my transport, an electric bike. They're called e-bikes in China. E-mail is electronic mail or electric mail. Well, what about if we, if we um, connect that to the word motion, e-motion? E-motion, electric motion. Yeah? Yeah. We can do this with... Um, um, with other other words, what was that one that came to you in the shower, Harry? I'll let you. Um, I'll let you explain that. <laughs> well, I was just we were, we had talked uh, a little bit about the whole email, e bike, uh, eBay. We were talking about how e is in a lot of today's um, way of commerce, uh, way of communication, way of transport. Well, hang um, on. Well, before um, before you, uh, you you explain that, let me just um, throw something in here. Um, e, energy, right? Now, yeah. when we look at currency, current C, current E. Currency is a battery, right? Um, what do I mean by that? It's a store, it's an energy store, okay? Yeah. They call it a promissory note. Promise, sorry. Promise, sorry. Right. So when you've got to work, you are using your energy in some form or another, whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. You get paid for that energy, right? For that work. They give you pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do with that piece of paper, those pieces of paper? Well, let's say I come to your house and I paint your house for you. I'm using my energy. You're going to give me the stored energy, which is in the, in the cash, right? Yeah, that's right. So what happens when you borrow money? You pay it back. I'm talking about when you borrow money from the bank. You pay it back with interest, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. okay, it's one thing to use your energy in order to repay the debt, but you're using extra energy in order to pay the interest, right? Yeah. yeah. And what's that called, Harry? Well, that's called user e usury. Usury. Yeah. So when you're using your e or your energy, your usury is being charged to you so that you're using up your e to pay with their usury. Yeah. <laughs> of course, you just use the word charge. Yeah. I will mm -hmm. charge you. Yeah, mm -hmm. like you charge yeah. a battery or you charge your phone. Yeah. Yeah? yeah, it's absolutely amazing when you um when you 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 take these dark, deep dives. Another word that um that I'll let you explain this, Harry. But how do you succeed in life? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, if you want to climb the corporate ladder or if you want to get that part in that motion picture. 
They say that you have to, if you want to succeed, you have to suck seed. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a play on words, but it's really the truth. In many cases, you don't get to climb up the ladder because of your accomplishments or your ability. It's just what you're willing to do for that, that scum who's going to give you that uh, chance to climb the ladder because he wants you to go down his ladder. <laughs> you got it. Um, <clears throat> now, I, I saw something this morning. I, I, I can't. I can't remember. I, have, I haven't looked at it yet, um, but it caught my eye. And it was talking about living in two realities at the same time. We live in two realities at the same time. Um, now, one of our wonderful subs, Haley, um, asked a question last week um, about where are we when we, we're in bed, we're, we're sleeping, we're having a lucid dream. And then we wake up and there's a point of awakening when we wake up in the morning that, that, that we're kind of still dreaming, but kind of not dreaming. We're at that crossover point. How would you explain that, Harry? Because I know you've had a, your own experience. Do you want to tell us about your experience jumping up the stairs? Yeah. yeah. Um, back when I was about 21 years old, uh, I was having a, a lucid dream and I had a history of sleepwalking at the same time. Um, I, I actually sleepwalked and sleep talked uh, quite a bit back then. And uh, so I was having a dream that I was jumping into a jacuzzi and I took a leap into that jacuzzi. Well, and who, who was in the jacuzzi? It was my, my fiance was in there. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, but he, uh, upon waking up the next morning, uh, my sister had told me that that night I was sleepwalking and I was at the probably about four or five steps from the bottom of a stairway and I jumped off the fifth step into the living room where she was watching TV. And of course, she then helped me up and helped me back to go back to sleep. Uh, and it wasn't until the next morning that I realized that, oh, I was jumping into a jacuzzi in my dream. Simultaneously, I was jumping off stairs into uh, a living room. So I think what happened is that dual reality was happening maybe in two realms. Maybe I, in one of my realities, I was actually jumping into a jacuzzi. In another reality, I was jumping off stairs. Well, the way the way I look at it, uh, I don't know if this is going to make sense to um, to people listening to this. But if you've got your if you've got a, a video camera, whether it be a mobile or whatever, and you film your TV, not that you should watch TV, you should uh, you film your TV and you change the channel on your TV. Now, to your eyes, it's going to appear instantaneous, right? But if you play back the video, as you video the, the changing of the channel on the TV, if you play it back really, really slowly, you're going to come to a point where the channel that you've been watching fades out and the other one fades in. You're going to have a crossover. You're going to see that the, the, the two images, faded images, on the screen at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because one goes out and the other one comes in. That's the way I see the, the the these kind of these two realities and i and i've been trying to connect this to the mandela effect because you know i'm as people know i'm hugely um mandela affected as are many many people even though some people still seem to disagree with it um but i think we all are up to a up to a point so and and you know we have a i i, I let my kids have a we have a movie class um at uh, at school um, so the kids get to watch an English movie with Chinese subtitles. It's all about just getting to, um, um, it's all about getting to be comfortable with, you know, the, the, the English, English speaking, um, because they don't, in, in, in Chinese schools, all they want, all they focus on is reading and writing, no listening and no speaking, right? So I, uh, I try and uh, address that. 
And it's for the most part, they get to choose um, what uh, movie they watch. And these kids are like 16, 17 years old. And then the last one is a movie called Tenet, T-E-N-E-T. Um, haven't seen all of it yet, um, but it's talking about a simultaneous reality, but in reverse. So it, it, it begins in this, this show when it's demonstrating this, where a guy picks up an empty gun and aims it at a target that's already got up, already been shot. Right, so he squeezes the trigger, and at the point he squeezes the trigger, the hole that's in the target closes up, and the bullet comes and ends up in the in in the pistol, right? Um, and it's this guy that's got this technology to be able to engineer things and bring them back into the into the present, almost like we the the the, the the two realities are one's going forward in time at the same time, uh, the, the second reality is coming backwards in time. I know that sounds a bit a bit out there, but I'm I'm wondering if there's some kind of truth drop in that. Almost like a, like a bizarro, right? Yeah. Like the, the yeah. opposite of man. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's also um, let me see if I can. Oh, I can't pull it off. That picture that um, that I showed you, um, where you've got it's from an Indian Vedic um, um, mythology. They call it mythology, where you got two lions, um, one facing west, one facing east. Um, the westward facing one um, refers to yesterday, and the east facing one refers to tomorrow. And in the middle is a picture of the sun perfectly balanced pineal gland um which demonstrates the now right everything is the now everything's happening at the same time right it reminded me of that god janus with the um the the, the one the two head two-faced god one facing one way one facing the other way um and i think it's the same uh, reference is the same thing there is only the now People that, that you guys watching this video, you're watching this in our future because we're recording this. I will upload it and then you get to watch it. But even though there's a 13 hour time difference between me and Harry, we're recording this in the now. Everything that's happening around us is happening now. Yeah. So there is a future. There is a past because we can remember what we did yesterday. But everything that happens only happens now, right now. Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to move on to this this reality thing, um, because there's a really good friend of mine um, here in China. He's in his mid thirties, I think, and he's um, he's from Denmark. So he's you know his English is good, um, but he struggles with a, a few words occasionally. Um, and I'm not going to mention his name because he's asked not to, but he's given me permission to um, to tell you his story because he's got, he's got a memory that he's held since he was a very, very, very young child. And one of our great subs, Anne, she's also emailed me. I told her about this, and she says that she's got a pre-birth memory as well. Now, last week we talked about the River Lethe, about the mind wipe. Yeah, why it, why, and why it, why it happens. Um, but my friend is convinced that he's been allowed to keep this one memory, one memory from um, his previous. Um, and it, will, it, it should become clear. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what he said first. The memory, he was standing looking through an opening, a large opening. Could have been a window, could have just been a hole. Um, and he was, it was his own, um, it was his place, whether it was his factory, office, home, he doesn't know. He just knows that it was, it was his. And he's a big boss. And he was waiting, he's looking out this window. He can't remember what he was looking at, but he remembers looking at this opening. Um, and he was waiting for confirmation. That's, that's all he could say. And next to him, there were two guards 
Both of them had guns and they were also looking out the window. They were his guard, right? So he was some kind of big boss. They were also looking out the window. Suddenly, he said the ground started shaking, the building started shaking because of this big machine. He said, he said I had a huge feeling of happiness. My machine worked. Now, it wasn't his machine insofar as he built it, but he was in charge of trying to get it up and running again, repairing it. Suddenly, um, some people burst into the room and one of the guards turned around. He turned around. One of the guards turned around. So the guard that was on his right, as he turned around, was now on his left. By the time the guard had got his gun ready, he'd been shot. The intruders didn't speak. I had this huge feeling of anger. And, I, and the other guard, they shot the other guard. And he said, just shoot me. I don't want any of this shit, just shoot me because I'll just come back and do this again. And their reply was, we know. He said, they grabbed me. And then the next thing we were in another room. It was almost like we were teleported to another room. And then they put me in this machine and I was born here. Now, he said that the reason that they, that the word that he used was, they wanted to slow me down. And I didn't, I didn't quite get what he meant. So I, I, I gave him another call and, and he said that wherever he was, he was obviously too powerful. He was obviously very, very powerful um, and clever. And he is, he's pretty switched on this dude. And you know, this guy doesn't have a bad bone in his body. No, he can't read or write. In, in this realm, he cannot read, he cannot write. Yeah, you said he was dyslexic, right? Yeah, yeah. He, um, he's had more than one near-death experience, but he, you know, he's, he's, he's managed to um, not die. He's extremely talented, um, but he also has problems with his body. He's got problems with his bones. He's got problems with his heart. He's only 30 something um it's got many many not not so much health problems but things like he can't he can't go and exercise right he can't go to the gym right he couldn't he just his body couldn't couldn't cope with it so what's happened is is he feels that he's been uh, he's been sent here as some well he says some form of punishment but it's not really punishment in the way because they can't make you um come back here um but he thinks he was coerced into coming back here but he knows why he's here this one memory he's been allowed to hold on to because that is what he's supposed to do is to slow slow down if this guy could read or write mate i bet you he'd be a best-selling author uh, and I, I, I mean that i mean that i mean i know the guy personally he's been here he stayed with me in this apartment um, for a week, a few months ago. Um, and yeah, he clearly remembers this. Because um, I said, are you sure it's not a dream? He said, no, I've, I've, I've known this all my life. Did, did you see he's an artist? What does he do? He makes something? Oh, yeah, oh, he's a jeweler. He makes jewelry. Oh, okay. Yeah, jeweler. He makes, he makes jewelry. Um, mm -hmm. And sells it in markets and so on and so forth. Mostly silver, silver jewelry. Um, so yeah, very very artistic, um, and as I say, if he could if he could read and write, he'd be I'm, I'm sure he'd be a, a best a best selling author, without a shadow of a doubt. Mm -hmm. So this is um, all connected to what um, Haley was talking about when he made the comment about where are we when we're in between coming out of a lucid dream, and I I documented one of my lucid dreams. Um, um, and I can still remember it. I mean, it was months and months and months ago. Um, it was as real as this reality, if you want to call it that. Um, but there's more and more people now coming to the conclusion that we are living in some kind of simulation, some kind of um, uh, virtual reality game 
that's been hijacked. And John Lam Lash goes into great detail about how the um, the God of the Bible is essentially malware infected this um, this reality with the Yehudans and got them to take um, to take it over. Yeah, and uh, not so much the actual God, but uh, the one in the Bible, like we said. Yeah. That's, well, that's where the malware starts. John talks about the um, the actual real God, if you like, of being yeah. Sophia, Gaia, um, which is the Earth, simply Mother Earth. Yeah. 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 I heard uh, a lady, uh, and and John shared this lady's video. She was actually reprimanding him. Because he, she says that he re, he referred to um, have a tantric experience with a naked Gaia. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, she was offended by that. <laughs> wow. She must not understand what tantric means. No. no. Obviously, and it's not. A it's not a rape. It's a a oneness, yeah. you know, it's a oneness. Yeah. Now, there's something that um, that struck me um, uh, about a week ago. Um, I don't know where it came from, but there's an old um, UK, old English TV series from the 70s, and it's called The Tomorrow People. Now, you know, it's it's. It's not really good, but you know it's on YouTube, uh, and I suggest that if you if you're not aware of it, just go. I'm just going to have a quick look at episode number one, right? You may as well start at the beginning. Um, but again, truth drop, truth drop. It's talking about two realities, yeah. Um, mm. This one being a simulation. I mean, who knows? Maybe there is a um, another earth in, in in which the hijack never happened and, and and the tartarians are still running around building their awesome um constructions uh, with free energy and and everything that goes with it and this is the simulation this hijack simulation in which we're forced to spend our energy in exchange for worthless bits of paper promised sorry notes um, because they're feeding off our energy. And that's what they're doing by getting that wealth. Because the wealth that we are providing them by way of tax and so on and so forth, fines, um, comes from us expending our energy in order for them to, um, to live off it. So when people, when people um, struggle with the question, well, what does it mean when you say they feed off our energy? Well, if our energy is going into creating the paper, the money, the cash, um, that is, is providing their lavish lifestyles and their big houses and their flash cars, you know, um, that's exactly, exactly what it means. They're feeding off our energy. Yeah, and, uh, and, and, and in creating the currency, uh, that's the paper money that we hold in our hands that's pretty much not being used that much anymore. It's not that much different than the energy being expelled to create the cryptocurrency. We're using all these supercomputers to create the formulas to mine this cryptocurrency. So really, there's no difference. It's just one you can touch and one you can't. Energy is still being utilized uh, at the expense of the human being. Yeah, absolutely. Which, which reminds me, I, I, I shared this with you that uh, you recall that in January, uh, my father did pass away. Uh, and he, um, uh, he was uh, uh, asked, uh, he had asked us to take care of him uh, through cremation. And uh, one of the things that uh, came to my surprise was that the, um, the mortuary that helped us with that whole process did tell us two things. One, that they wanted to know in the event of 
the whoever possesses the urn, they'd like to know where uh, the residence would be for that urn if it changed address. And if if upon changing residence to inform them so they they could record the address of the urn. And what what and, about if you go abroad with it? If you if you move it. And, yeah, and if you go abroad, uh, you have to verify with the, the country that you're going to in what manner you can transport and what paperwork you have to fill out for that for that movement of the urn. So that's just another key funny thing that I never thought about. I, I my, the first thought that I that came to me was um, you know, with with going overseas would be um, potential drug smuggling, but. If, if 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 anybody's um you know watching this and, and, and knows what Harry's talking about, why do they want to know if you're gonna if you've got a um a relative that's been cremated in, you know on, on, above your fireplace and you move hands, why yeah. would you let them know? Yeah, why would the mortuary really need to know that you moved either to the next city or to the next state? Yeah. Why would they need to know? And, and I, I remember telling you, I um, I used to have a friend many, many years ago back in the UK who worked in a crematorium. And he said that the coffin goes in on um, metal rollers, basically, on this like tabletop bench thing with, with rollers. Then it's burnt. And then when everything's cooled down, him and another guy used to go in there with um, what he described as being like a paddle like an oar, if you want, you know, that you can row a boat with, but much smaller. A pole with a, with a flattened out end. And they would bash whatever was left on the, the rollers through onto the floor, sweep it up and put it in an urn. So mm -hmm. you could be, you know, you, you, your dad could be in there with, with, with bits of two other people. Yeah, yeah, you're commingling ash and bone. And that was also disclosed to us too, that uh, just like when you read the label on a, like a candy bar, it, it'll say this candy bar was manufactured in a plant that de deals with nuts, Yeah. right? Yeah. So you could have uh, remains of another person in that urn or your family members or, uh, the remains can be in someone else's urn, so. And yeah. um, the other, um... The other thing that uh, I just wanted to mention when we were talking about, because I know a lot of a lot of um, our sub like um, like us talking about the, the English language and, and words. Mm -hmm. now, I wasn't aware of this, but apparently the word civil, as in civil rights or civil mm -hmm. law, actually means Roman. Now we're we're looking at Black's Law Dictionary, okay, which is. You know, it's, it's you can find it online. To apply for something, to apply for a job, means to beg. And to require means to demand. Demand, yeah. You demand. Are required to do this. They are demanding that you do this. And and this this all came about because, um, uh, as I told you, in in one of my classes, one of the one of the one of my students asked me to explain the word compliment, right? It was in the context of um, somebody getting a complimentary breakfast, right? Yeah. He was, he was like, well, hang on, to compliment means to say, hey, you're pretty or, you know, or whatever, thank you, to give somebody a compliment. So I was explaining to him that a lot of people, and he understands this, especially in China, they don't like the word free. Right, buy this and we'll you'll get this free. And I was explaining to him that you know if you buy this, you will get a complimentary that. Right. So buy a packet of cigarettes and you'll get a complimentary lighter, a free lighter. So um, that took me down this. I started thinking and I started looking at some of these words and I was quite surprised. To require means to demand. Apply means to beg. And civil means Roman. Promise. Yeah, I thought, you, I thought you meant complimentary as in uh, two angles to add up to 90 degrees. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's another, that's another, um, another meaning. Um, oh, yeah. And the word adult means at yeah. 
<laughs> adult. Adult is a stupid person. Yeah. Yeah. So we adults yeah. are adults. Yeah, adults. You think that you're at complimenting someone by telling them they're mature, but really you're just telling them that they're an oaf. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and another word, to, another good word to look up is property. Um, because we are the, the, the governments of the world see us as their property. Um, and I'm just going to finish this by reminding people that the um, we were talking about them feeding off our energy, right? Well, what's the big bank known as? The, the, the what? Reserve, the Federal Reserve is the Fed. Oh, yeah. The yeah. Fed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is the most prolific or famous college in in the UK in England? It's Eton. 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 Yeah, spell E T O N. And what are extraterrestrials known as? ETs. 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 Yeah. ETs. So you've got the Fed, because we're feeding them. Eaton, Eaton College. This has been right in front of our noses all our lives, guys, and we never even noticed. Mm -hmm. Because we were too trusting, because that's in our nature. That's right. You know, we were, yeah. we were, one, of, one, of these, one of these guys, in fact, there's more than one now, um, are talking about when we, ah, what's that word, Harry? That's uh, apoptosis. Okay. When we, um, when we experience apoptosis, A-P-O-P-T-O-S-I-S, look up the meaning. John Lamlash referred to epoptosis as our death, our physical death, as in a way. Now, people who have um, had near-death experiences, many, many people that have had near-death experiences will tell the same story that they are coerced into coming back. They don't want to come back. They're coerced into coming back. How do they do that? They use love as a weapon. Now, this week's podcast is going to be on love. Harry's prepared a great PPT um, how in Greek there are eight different words for, that, that, that mean love or eight different types of love. Um, and, you know, in English, it's one love. In Chinese, I, A-I, as we, as we talked about, one word. But Greek has got... We'll, we'll, we'll do this next week, but essentially, you know, when you're a kid, you love your parents, but you love your parents in a different way to the way you love your brother or sister. Um, and then you meet someone and you fall in love, you love them in a different way. You have kids, you love your kids in a different way. You love your friends in a different way. I go into the classroom, I love my students in a different way. Mm -hmm. So it's all love, but dressed up in different, uh, in, in different forms. Um, with which the Greek language has got a word for each one of those different types of love. So what they've done is they used love, they being them, they weaponized um, the word love. And so many of these people who say they have this near-death experience, um, oh, you've got to go back because you've got kids. And you, you know, what about your mom? And what about your big house? And what about all that money that you've got in the bank? And so on and so forth. So it's all twisted and they are almost coerced into coming back by fear and guilt. You know, you can't, you know, how, how upset is, is, your, is your young son going to be to lose his dad? You can't do that. You've got to go back. Well, they're not going to scare someone with a, uh, with a scary image to get them back into their skin. You know, they, they can't use a Freddy Krueger or a Jason or, or a slasher. So they got to do something like a dad or a mom or a child or, like you said, the bank account, the stuff, the materialistic stuff. Yeah. And, of course, that coercion, we showed it to you uh, on that uh, Star Trek episode. But, um, you know, one of the reasons I think that it was so easy for them to use love as that weapon of choice is because... When you think of AI, you think of uh, a damaged person. You know, uh, uh, if you compare AI to a human being, 
uh, they kind of consider it very similar to an autistic child been damaged by maybe something uh, maybe a yeah and and so you uh, you you have a special ability but then you ha you lack certain abilities like how to interact and so I kind of think that the AI then mimics this damaged person in their inability to express themselves and that's why love is just the one word they use because they can't figure out the other seven you know to uh, to be able to express so they just lop it all together and uh, there you go well that that's that's where the word nobility comes from you know we think of the uh, the british royal family and that as being the nobles the nobility yeah but no they just ability no ability, no ability. No ability. No ability. day in their life yeah no ability what does the word para mean in greek harry as in parasite because that um if you haven't seen the video that harry's just mentioned the podcast with the Star Trek, um, it's on the channel. It's called Parasite, S-I-G-H-T. But, uh, but what does the word para mean? Because it, 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 it's in parachute, parasite. Yeah. You know what? I'd have to really check on that. It's not very, you know, not use it too much. But I know that in the Latin, it means four. All right. Yeah. So yeah. four, not the number four, but four, like uh, for purposes of. Four wow. something. Foresight. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Talking, of, talking of looking it up, guys, I'll just, just throw this in. Harry and I, after we did uh, last week's podcast, the, the following day, he contacted me on, um, uh, on my, sent me a message on the phone and said, Hey, nice. Do you want to jump on on Zoom and chat? So we jumped on and we were, how long were we going? Four hours, over four hours. Yeah, it was a pretty long one. <laughs> and then we had another two hours and then we had another four hours over the weekend. So, and um, this is why we, you know, all this, uh, all these different topics. Um, but one thing we were talking about was the uh, the Mandela effect. Now, um, there's one that seems to have really suddenly head, in which the um, the passage in the Bible was talking about when two or more are gathered in my name, and it seems to have changed to when two or three are gathered in my name. So Harry pulled out his 25 year old. Greek Bible, everything's in Greek. And what did you say about that, Harry? The, 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 there are no gaps between the words, yeah. right? It's called a concordant uh, Greek text, meaning there's not a gap between any word or, or line or sentence. So uh, the first letter has no space all the way to the end, to the end of the Bible. So page one and page you know, 400, there won't be any spaces anywhere. Right. Uh, and so you have to just by reading it, just know where the word ends and where it begins. And but then when I, you you used to be a full on Jesus juice, didn't you? You were you were yeah. a, a yeah. Christian. So yeah, you were you were you were aware of that passage when two or more are gathered in my name. I was. I mean, I, my pastor has always taught on it, and then so I opened that concordant text from twenty five years ago. It says two or three in Greek. Yeah, and in Greek, yeah. Uh, Vio o, o tria. Yeah. O yeah. Now, I was talking to a, a guy on Stolen History um, about the Mandela effect. He doesn't think it's real. And I mentioned the Lion and the Lamb, right? And yeah. what he did, I mean, all credit to him, people on there are pretty serious researchers. And he pulled up the passage from pre-KJV Bible. Right, these are Bibles that were around in the 1500s, and they all say the wolf should dwell with the lamb. All of them. Oh, okay. So para in Greek, uh, it's not used that much now, but in the uh, in the form uh, that the Bible is written, it means by on the side of next to. What's that para? Yeah. Oh, okay. By yeah. Next so to. Para parasite is right next to you. The site's right next to you. But parachute, I wonder what that's um, the etymology of that is. We'll have to look at that. Um, all right. Well, have you got anything to um, to wrap mm -hmm. up with, Harry? Um, not not much. I think we covered a lot in both of our presentations today. The rant and this one. Um, just reiterate. Uh, go follow the links that are going to be available to see the first one because we can't talk about it here. Otherwise, we get censored. 
Uh, but uh, with regards to uh, language, always be looking at what you're saying. Uh, be you know, be vigilant on what words you may want to stop saying, like that believe word. We hardly ever say it if we do it, it's on accident. And um, let's look forward to uh, explaining love next week. Yeah. Well, just want to finish up with I've just noticed. When you're at school, you are known as a student, unless you're in the UK, where you're known as a pupil, mm -hmm. P-U-P-I-L. And of course, your pupil is in your eye. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the bit around your eye is called the iris, which is Siri backwards. Mm -hmm. What's that stupid little machine called that people have? Alexa or Siri? Mm -hmm. Yeah? All connected yeah. to the all-seeing I. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. I. I. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's all there. I am. I am. <laughs> I, yeah. iPhone. iPad. We used to live in a pad. When I lived in the UK, yeah, back in the in the in the 70s and 80s, your pad, come back to my pad, was yeah. um was where you live. Now people live on a pad, an iPad. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we'll finish it there. Thanks for uh, thanks for your time. Thanks for listening, and um, we'll see you on the next one. Take care. All right. All right. Take it easy.